everyone and welcome to this live event today where we're going to talk about valuable digital collectible platform. With me today I have Patrick from Proxid who is going to tell us more about their marketplace that they have built on Concordium called Cypress Me that we're super excited about. So Patrick, yes. really happy to have you here in Copenhagen with us. Glad I'm here. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Who is Patrick? Yes, and of course. More um, about Proxy than Cypress Me, please. Yeah, well, um, to start with myself, um, I'm Patrick Teranea. Uh, I'm founder of Proxy and head of product of the project Cypress Me, which uh, launched in uh, November. And uh, well, what it is, it's a platform for uh, real world assets. Uh, which you can mint on the blockchain. That's it. Yes. That's very <laughs> short. Yeah. And Proxid, what's the relationship between Proxid, ah, Proxid and is, uh, Cypress Me? Yeah, that's a Web3 development a agency. Uh, we build uh, Web3 solutions, uh, which of course uh, Concordium is a, a big uh, chain uh, we are uh, using to make it an, uh, a safe haven for uh, uh, collectors. Um, we work closely together with uh, uh, Rodeo Enskede. Uh, it's I know it's difficult to pronounce, but uh, it's a, a three century centuries old uh, printing company uh, situated in uh, in in Holland and well known for its banknotes and stamps production and high security uh, printables. Uh, we work closely together with them, and I will tell you more about what we did with CybersMe in a few yes. minutes. Really exciting. So, we have spoken a little about Cypress Me, but please tell us more about this really, really interesting and cool marketplace. I know our uh, everyone who's listening in is really interested to know more about this. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what we did, um, we uh, cooperated with uh, Rodeo and Enskede and the Deutsche Post uh, DHL, uh, making uh, a crypto stamp. And the crypto stamp is actually uh, a, a real world stamp. And I got an example here. It's a booklet in which you have the, uh, the real stamp. You can put on an uh, envelope and send it. Uh, but there are two codes on it here. Uh, that's a, a public ID and a claim code or pin code, which can be used to uh, get that uh, digital or digitalized uh, mm. image of the, this, in this case, the Brandenburg Tor in your collection. And from there, you can mint it for free into an NFT. Yeah, really, really cool. And I mean, it's a really good use case for it as well, because then you can store all yeah. of it and we will talk more about it. And you will also show us a demo of the platform. Absolutely, yeah. So I think if we go into more about the yeah. booklet that you just showed. Yeah, yeah. I gladly tell you more about it. Um, actually, uh, when you look at it, uh, it's it's just made of paper. Uh, it's sealed, so it's secure. Uh, there are a lot of uh, extras on it. Uh, that means uh, there are special codes with the German Post uh, uh, have uh, 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 developed. That's called a data matrix code. So every stamp on this booklet is already unique. Um, and when you follow uh, all the instructions on the booklet, you first scan with your camera the URL, then you will be guided towards the German Post website and from there on you can go to Cyphers Me, enter uh, the claim code, get it to your collection and mint the NFT for free. It actually is quite uh, simple, it's a very user-friendly platform. And uh, now we are in getting into the more exciting stage and that's building a marketplace on Concordium. Yes, exactly. Because I know right now it says MetaMask Wallet and Polygon Chain, yeah. but you will talk more about what's coming in 2024, of course, yeah. which will be also to adding this into the Concordium ecosystem, yeah. which we're super excited about. So, yes, uh, <laughs> well, that's actually uh, especially also a little bit for this uh, uh, broadcast, uh, we have made some promo stamps. So we made uh, booklets ourselves and uh, those booklets are actually, we, we give them out for people to experience the easiness of making uh, uh, an NFT of a real world asset. 
and we call them the parrots. And we got two of them, and uh, we made a video uh, uh, to show you guys uh, how it works to uh, scan uh, or enter the code and claim it uh, uh, to your collection and then make it an NFT. So maybe we can go forward to that. Demo. Yeah, that's the demo. So now we're going to show a demo where you showcase yep. this in the on yeah. the so this is the booklet just, just like this you can see the the codes on the right side uh, you can see the instructions and why, why it's so unique when you scratch off the code on the on the on the right bottom uh, it's you can make an account on cyphers me and when you sign in to your uh, uh, account you can actually uh, scan the QR code uh, on the booklet or add the code manually. In this case, this is the desktop version, so we enter it manually. Then you can see here it's not claimed and not minted, but when you put in the claim code, it's, an, uh, it's yours. It's in your collection, it's visible, and you can see that it's, uh, it's yours. Then you can, uh, here you see it's yours there. It's claimed, it's not minted yet. When you connect, in this case, it's MetaMask later on, it's Concordium as well. You can create an NFT of the stamp and you will see the picture will change and every uh, picture, uh, uh, when you minted it, gets a unique token ID, in this case, 0411, with all the details on the chain. So actually, it's a very intuitive process. It's easy, it's understandable, and everybody can do it. Yeah, definitely. And I think what I really like about this, as you showed here on the demo, is that as a user, it's very user friendly because it gives you a feeling of what you're used to when it comes to Web 2. And then you just exactly. added it into the Web 3 world, which I love. So in one, in really in one platform, in one product, I as a user can go in and I can add my stamp and I can mint it. And then in the future, I can also sell it yes, as yes. an NFT if you want to purchase it or, uh, or not, or Absolutely. if I just want to add it there. Yeah. So that's really, really cool and really interesting. And I'm super excited to have Concordium yeah. added on top of this as well. Yeah. yeah, we are also super excited to add Concordium because uh, it's a blockchain that gives us and also our collectors a safe haven to uh, collect their valuable collectibles. So uh, we are really aiming on those collectibles that are worth more for a collector. So uh, that can be rare whiskies or wines or champagnes. It can be vinyl records. It can be anything. Yeah, definitely. So what's the next steps then for <coughs> Cyphers Me? And what's coming to, what can we expect in 2024? Well, actually, we start with building the uh, platform. Uh, sorry, uh, the marketplace where you can actually uh, get your real world assets as an NFT. So registration, provenance, eh, ownership, that will be all be uh, minted on the, on the Concordium chain because there's a real world identity uh, added uh, linked to the wallet. It's a very safe haven eh, for, for collectors to start collecting their valuable collectibles. So that's the planning for the first quarter of next year. Um, yeah, well, actually, uh, uh, during that year, we will also go uh, uh, to add more business lines. We started now with crypto stamps. We go uh, also go to uh, banknotes. We'll show you later on uh, what we do with that. Uh, but there are also other plans. Uh, just I said, well, the liquors and the, and the, and the vinyl records. And uh, we got a lot of plans and business lines no, lined definitely. up for next year. Yeah. It's super exciting. I mean... You've built this platform now as a product, and then of course you can add more things on top of it. Yeah. And I think it's just endless use cases, and it's more about it prioritizing what could be the next big thing that yeah. can hit uh, Cyphers Me, which is extremely interesting. I mean, I, I like watches, so uh, yeah. you can add watches to it yeah. as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. You can register them. Uh, you can have your provenance on chain. Uh, you can show it's yours because you, uh, it's in your wallet uh, and that you are the owner of it. So it's got a lot of uh, uh, goodies for collectors. Definitely. Yeah. So I know all of us here at Concordium are really, really excited that you partnered with us and that you see us as a trusted partner and a blockchain where you definitely want to build on top of it, uh, top, of, top of. But I think it's always interesting to hear it from the company itself. Yeah. So why Concordium and why are you so 
like enthusiastic about building yeah. on top of us, which we're super happy about. Well, actually, we discovered uh, Concordium, I think, almost two years ago already. And then uh, I was into the notary world uh, to make it, uh, deeds uh, 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 much easier than only on paper. So uh, we discovered Concordium with uh, which you have a wallet with a real world identity linked to it. That will be the perfect pair, you know, the, 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 the notary and then the, the real world identity uh, uh, that's linked to the transaction. So that was the start of us thinking, how can we use Concordium for other users? And um, um, actually we then started uh, working together, cooperated uh, uh, with uh, Royo and Enschede. And they had, uh, well, stamps. Well, stamps is still one of the biggest collectibles worldwide. So we thought that's a good market to, uh, to, to join in uh, with Jo and Enschede. And around that uh, topic, crypto stamps, we start building the whole CybersMe idea. <coughs> uh, then we found our first customer, that's Deutsche Post uh, DHL, and they prefer to, uh, the, to go to, the, to another chain than, Blo than Concordium. <coughs> and then, uh, well, we came along because we wanted to develop the, the, the CybersMe platform. And now uh, they are live and you can buy that uh, crypto stamp from, uh, from the Deutsche Post now. Um, we are now developing our marketplace on Concordium. And uh, we also looking, of course, forward to uh, also add the Polygon minted NFTs on that marketplace, which is based on Concordium. But the thing is why Concordium is so, uh, so um, I say valuable for us is that we see it's the best tech in the industry. It's got instant finalization, which is very important with valuable uh, objects and valuable uh, NFTs. It's the fast transaction speed that's, uh, that's very uh, uh, valuable to us as well. And the low transaction costs, well, that speaks for itself. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, and we're super happy about that. And I myself, of course, like the best tech in the industry, I believe so, but it's always fun to hear someone else say it. And Absolutely. I agree with you, instant finalization is definitely extremely important when it comes yeah. to this platform and for the user, like the user experience of it. You don't exactly. want to have to wait, even 10 seconds would be no, that's annoying. a lot in yeah. a fair sense. So yeah. I would say our finalization of three seconds make it feel instant, which is good yeah. for the user. Of course. So if we then jump back to Cyphers Me and yeah. talk a little about the benefits that you had when you did the marketplace and what you're seeing as a really big user from a user perspective. And then if you talk about the publishers, what, what's the key highlights you want to add to that? Yeah, what we see out there is that uh, there's a lot of fragmentation when it comes to platforms and marketplaces. Actually, we are aiming at being a one stop solution. Mm -hmm. So if you want as a brand or a, a producer or, or an issuer or a publisher, when you want to bring out there something in the, in the Web3 world, we want to be a one-stop solution. So you bring your products to us and we help you uh, get it on the, on the Web3. And, and, and also what I also stated here, we help you with the international sales and marketing. And also very important, when you have real world assets, it's just the asset, but with NFTs, you can add utility to them, eh? you know, special, uh, attractive uh, actions. And that's really uh, uh, what we are all, all about for the publishers with our Web3 innovation. And well, the highest security, well, that's, that's of course, the Concordia. Uh, and for example, in this case with banknotes, or we call them, actually we call them uh, event notes and also the, those crypto stamps. We have the, the best design and we have the best uh, uh, printing uh, facility. So it's really a one-stop shop. Definitely. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that, which, which what we touched base on when we saw the demo about yeah. the ease of use of it and high security of, yes, <laughs> it is the blockchain, which is always uh, good to add in, yeah. uh, which is good for publishers. But I know also when we talk about the users, that's also good for trust um, to know Absolutely. that, hey, this, this is actually the the deal that yeah. i i bought so no scamming so to yeah. speak so if we then jump on to the collectors what would you say is the biggest benefits for them i already said it i think <laughs> twice or, or three times it's a safe haven well you know when you when you're collecting valuables you you you, you don't want to trust them to 
a web 2 application which is central now you want a decentralized solution which is very safe and if you buy something on the marketplace you want to be sure that there's a, a human behind it and that you're not getting scammed uh, a, a bottle of tea instead of whiskey when you pay a lot of money for it so uh, that's actually what the collectors will attract and that's all ready we get feedback from collectors uh, uh, saying uh, uh, when do you open up your marketplace so we can start uh, uh, adding our valuable collectibles to it because it's safe. Uh, uh, we are all about uh, the best user experience. Uh, we got very uh, knowledgeable user uh, uh, experience builders, uh, UUX uh, designers on our team. Um, and what also is very important, and uh, you saw that in the, uh, well, or not, it, it went very fast, but uh, <laughs> uh, you saw that you can uh, add the real world asset, the digital version of it to your collection. So you can really uh, uh, make collections of, for example, stamps, but also rare whiskies or instruments or whatever uh, real world assets. Uh, uh, and then you can mint it. So there's a step before you can mint it. And that is well, a decision of the collector. That's yeah. a decision the collector has to make. So we give options in how you want to uh, build your collection. Um, for a lot of collectors, it's their first step in the Web3 uh, uh, space. So uh, it's also educational. Uh, when, you, you, when you have a collection and you want to make the NFT of it, you have to do things. Uh, you have mm. to have a wallet, you have to do your identification, and, and then suddenly it's an NFT. So it's very educational as well. Uh, and of course, uh, what we're all about, and that's our ambition, we want to be a valuable collectible platform that's worldwide available for every collector. Um, so, um, and the other thing is, that's the last one, of course, community. Web3 is all about community. Uh, the, 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 our community of collectors should have the shoulders under the, the, the platform uh, to make it uh, work worldwide. Definitely. Yeah. But I think one of the things that you mentioned that I think is interesting to just highlight with uh, with a platform is as a collector, I could actually go in and open up an account and add my collections to it without having to have the company first, like first advantage, right? Like imagine that I have a whiskey collection, I can actually go in and, and add it to the platform and then mint it and sell it myself without having without you guys having to go to the company and tell them to be on the platform. Is that correct? Because I well, think that's very in important to... Yeah, it's good that you, uh, that you, that you to say highlight. that. Yeah, yeah, well, first of all, uh, we want to have uh, um, real-world assets on our collectible uh, or collector's platform that are really uh, brought to us by the producers themselves. Yes. Uh, in order to get that provenance, mm. in order to give the, the collectors the real-world assets and not scammed assets yeah so uh, uh we will see how that uh, develops the next couple of months mm -hmm. we got some some things lined up so uh, uh bear with us on that but um, i think it's uh, it's good to know that uh, the things we bring to our marketplace they are backed up by the the, the issuers the publishers or the producers themselves so if you have a, a, a for example, uh, your watch and you want to bring it to the to our valuable collectible platform or mm. marketplace, it should be verified that's a real Rolex. Exactly. So but it could be verified by me as a user having that license, like, hey, this is actually the real. And yeah. I always get that when I buy uh, like high end, uh, exactly. high end yeah. items. Yeah. And then I can bring that to the platform and show that as a proof. Yeah. Or it could be that you first say no we want to get the watch maker on the platform yeah. first so but you're going to be able to do both if yes, i understood absolutely. correctly as long yeah. as i can prove that this is i have the license yeah. that it is actually what i'm telling you it is uh, and you can verify that yeah which i think is interesting because that opens up also two cases right like if you're going to have a lot of collectors coming into the marketplace and pushing that it might also make the brand aware of hey, this is actually something that our collectors are asking for, so we should also look into this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of things to do, especially with, uh, with valuable uh, products. Uh, and, uh, well, we uh, dare everybody who uh, have a good idea in bringing on valuable collectibles. Also, the brand, uh, brands and uh, production uh, producers uh, bring it on because uh, we are ready for it.
Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like it. And I really like when it's all in one platform, because as you were mentioning, you can also build your digi digital collection. Yeah. But it could also be now that you have a Deutsche Post, it could also be like as a company, you can actually utilize the power of Web3 and exactly. the digital power because now you have your customer on a platform. Yeah. So what if you tell your customers that if you get 10 of these collectibles, you actually can join a members club that is like a gold VIP. And we only have worldwide 100 who can, add, who can join this group. Yeah. And then you already, and then with that, you have a closed group and you've reached an international audience. Yeah but you didn't really have to do the manual steps that's required today. You actually just have it there because the yep. numbers speak for itself, yep. which is really cool. I'm really excited to see the future of this yep. marketplace and how it's going to change our behavior as well as human beings. Absolutely. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It gives also more confidence in, uh, in the online world. That's what it's all about, you know? And uh, um, you see that the, uh, the Web2 world, uh, the marketplaces you have now there, it's all not actually verified or the provenance yeah. is not in place or the, you get scammed uh, very easily. That will be uh, all uh, um, solved with Web3 and changed like accordion. Definitely. And that's what we're aiming to. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. So. I'm really excited for the next one you want to oh, show. Right, yes. So augmented reality. I yeah. know when you showed me this uh, note that yeah. Patrick is going to show soon. Uh, I thought it was really exciting and cool. Uh, so tell us more about the augmented reality that you are yeah. planning to also add to the marketplace. Yeah, actually, we already have that. Uh, uh, it's developed uh, in uh, uh, together with Royo and Enschede for their well security uh, uh, products. Uh, you can add augmented reality uh, to almost every surface. Uh, when on the surface, it will be uh, recognized by printing or connecting the dots. It will be recognized and it will show in the camera your uh, augmented reality object. And it is, it is fascinating and we can do a lot of, already did, we're also doing a lot of very uh, exciting stuff with it. And it can also bridge your real world asset to an NFT again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also for these, these booklets, which we have, uh, or other ideas, uh, we also use NFC chips, mm -hmm. uh, which you can scan with your, with your phone. Uh, there's an antenna on it and you can scan it. And that's also a bridge from a real world asset to the NFT uh, of the world of NFTs. So, mm -hmm. um, but adding uh, augmented reality, yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, and we made, we made a clip of it. And you can, I, I show you what happens when you open up your camera and, and scan those, uh, those back notes. Okay, this is still, uh, you need an app for it, but we also uh, have augmented reality where you don't need an app. That's really uh, an online experience without a native app. So here it shows a, a, a dragon which pops up when you scan uh, with your camera the note, that's it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was super fascinated with what you showed Yeah, there's me. also sound with it, but we, we couldn't show it here, but it's, uh, it's really fascinating. Oh, it makes a sound as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So another one is uh, the green one I brought. There's also, uh, uh, well, printed uh, lines on it, which will be recognized when you, uh, when you scan it with that app. And then it shows, an, uh, well, there it goes. It shows a, a guy who's <laughs> dancing <laughs> on your banknote. Yeah, and we have a lot of other projects uh, uh, made with augmented reality. These are just small, small examples, but it's, it's fun. It's fascinating. Everybody likes it. And uh, we are going to do more with that on, uh, on printed uh, services. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just adding an extra layer on collectible That's items, it. right? Yeah. Like. I, when you showed me the dragon, I felt like I was like Pokemon World. We yeah. have to get them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so well, I could just see like if you, if I would, if I have ten dragons to collect, I could just add all of them, and then the ten dragons together can create this universe. Absolutely. Almost. Like that's or so cool. Or an entrance cool. <laughs> to a VR world or a metaverse. Definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of things so, possible. Yeah. I think that was everything that you wanted to share today. Yeah. Uh, of course, we can talk so much more about 
the future and what we can be added, etc. But thank you so much again for coming, Patrick, and You're talking welcome. more about Cypress Me and giving us this demos. Yeah. Uh, we do have some questions, so we're going to go ahead and take them now. Yep. Um, and also, if we don't get along doing all questions, we will make sure to answer all of them on our social media. So stay tuned as well. But we do have some time to go through at least three questions today. So the first one that is in is, how does Cyphers Me plan to leverage the unique features of the Concordium blockchain, particularly regarding privacy and regulatory compliance? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of questions in one line. <laughs> yes. Actually, I can elaborate a, a lot about that. Um, actually, uh, the first things we saw on Concordium was uh, uh, the, the link of the identity to the transactions. And if you only think of those two, that you are responsible for the transaction you do on the chain, and if you commit fraud, you, will, you could be identified and, and brought to, uh, well, I say that, to justice. <laughs> uh, when you think only on that mechanism, uh, uh, there's a lot of things going to work, uh, especially in my brain. That's why I started with Notary. Mm. You know, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the, the branches where you need uh, a, a, a very uh, fundamental and basic and secure environment. Uh, and that's what Concordium brings to us. Mm. Uh, so now we with, this is fun stuff, you know, the collectibles are fun stuff, but just imagine that you have something that is so special to you, which is very valuable to you, and you want to show it to the world that's yours, and uh, you want to uh, to sell it also, or to want want to list it for sale. Uh, you don't do it on an open blockchain like there are out there. You want to do it on a safe chain, and that's really uh, well. Again, uh, Concordium, of course, of course, for us. Yeah. yeah. No, but I agree. But it's, uh, as well, the, the, it's also the the person who's purchasing the, the collectible Absolutely, yeah. also needs to be able to trust it and yeah. that you're storing it safe yeah. and all of that yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's, uh, there's also another question in it that's about legal and, and that kind of, that's, that's a whole different, uh, 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 I say, uh, uh, plan. no, a, a new, <laughs> a new life, uh, uh, event like this, it is, where, where you can, what you can talk about uh, the, the, the legal stuff behind NFTs and images and collectibles and how to deal with that. So that's too much uh, to answer now. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, but I think that is also one of the things you guys have to think about. No, because we are providing the platform yeah. and then you have to be the experts in following compliance or regulations yeah. and every country has its own regula like, regulatory Absolutely. Um, rules, which also will be followed yeah. in Cyphers Me. So definitely, it's a lot to take in place. So with that said, it's not just like, it's, it is a really, really hefty platform and it is powered by a lot of different yeah. areas. So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We already something. went through a lot of uh, legal and, uh, and compliance with the uh, Deutsche Post DHL. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. So we're, we're really familiar with that, but it, well, regulation can change over time. We yes. never know what we're going to get. Yeah. So s second question is, can you explain the process of, of converting real world assets into NFTs on your platform? What type of assets are best suited for this? We did yeah. touch base on that, but maybe you can give a little more details into that. Yeah, well, one of my special favorites are uh, those uh, real world assets that are very well common for most of us like wines and spirits or liquors or uh, well crypto stamps or stamps in this case or notes. Um, one of my favorites of course is to, to make the bridge from real world assets to NFC as easy as possible. And uh, so if you ask me which assets are most suitable, well, actually you can NFT anything you want, mm. uh, <clears throat> but make it a safe bridge uh, in order that it's guaranteed that the real world object is linked to the NFT, vice versa. That's a whole different area. So um, yeah. yeah, well, for now we are um, aiming at uh, the valuable collectibles because that's a market. I think that's, uh, that's a lot of in, uh, in development and there's a lot to do, but uh, you can take it to other higher levels if you want by uh, using more technology. And we'll see uh, how that develops in the next couple of years. 
Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think you also talked about like that you can actually bridge over the ch chip as well to yeah, the, the NFC mark. chip. Exactly, yeah. the NFC chip and that then in itself, if you have the NFC chip on the real world asset, yeah. like wine or collectible Absolutely. whiskeys, yeah. you can actually add them to the platform and then you can mint them and there you have your NFT. So now we've yeah. actually done all that transfer on Cypress Me. Yeah. So it, you can, you're, you're going to be able to do that in 2024. If I Absolutely. And uh, what, what we already uh, discussed about is also the track and trace ability, you know, uh, mm. uh, uh, when it goes uh, out of the factory and it's an NFT, it's, you can use also track and traceability added to it. Uh, if, the, if the chip uh, is on it, you can track and trace it anywhere within the logistic process until it's on your table. Yes, definitely. And sell it again. So uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, improvement in track and traceability. Yeah, and then you can also trust like how many resellers was that before I bought it, which is something yeah. that you also always you usually look into that, like how many own this yeah. collectible, because that's a big thing as well, and who owned it True. before me. And now you can actually be sure that that is the case yeah. and no one actually did something fraudulent on it. So exactly. the yeah. use cases are really endless in yeah, my opinion. Endless. Yeah, definitely. So we have one more question okay, before we end it. And that is, what is the biggest challenges and opportunities you see in linking real world assets with NFTs? I mean, we touched base on it now, but yeah. maybe we can extend on yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, well, every, every, every object that is dear to you, actually, that's, that's where we're aiming at. Uh, that, that people really want their valuable collectibles be safe not only registrated, uh, the provenance, the ownership, the authenticity, but also when you trade it or sell one on our platform, that it's secure. So that's, that's really, well, I think the, 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 the main, um, well, uh, USPs, uh, unique selling points <laughs> of our platform <laughs> or unique buying reasons, whatever you like. No, that's where we, that's where we are going for in 2024. Yeah, definitely. No, but it's really cool and we touched base on it as well. I think a lot is going to happen in 2024 yeah. and honestly in 2025 we're going to see very much change in human behavior and how we as human beings also work with this. And one of the things that I was just thinking about hearing you dare to you, I'm guessing also in the future it's going to be what do I want my children or grandchildren to inherit and what do like you start thinking about that as well it's not just about putting it on paper but actually putting it on a platform where I know it's secure and, yeah. I, I, and, and, and forever and, there for them exactly yeah. so I don't so I know they don't have to deal with it when I'm no longer here yeah. right so I think we're going to go into that as well in the future yeah and another thing I like to add before we leave uh, yeah. is that uh, um, the, the other exciting thing about F NFT is that you can make a digital twin of your mm -hmm. real world asset and you can bring it with you in all those new worlds. Definitely. Eh? In the game worlds, <laughs> VR worlds, metaverses. Uh, um, so that's also a very exciting utility that's added to NF NFTs. And there's a lot utility to be added more, but maybe that's not a live event as well. It is, it is, but yeah. it's also interesting because yeah. I think it touches the bridge about augmented reality and NFT that you For just example. showed because then yeah. it's like you yourself is the augmented reality and then yeah. you but can also, also prove that it's you and it's exactly. not that, hey, I'm actually making a version of Patrick who isn't Patrick and then I'm going around <laughs> trolling people as we say in, uh, in the internet era. Yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you again, Patrick, yep. for joining us here in Copenhagen. And thank you all for joining this live event. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know what you thought about it and uh, what your thoughts are on real world assets. And uh, yes, just NFTs generally. This is super exciting. We hope you really enjoyed it and have a really good day. Bye bye.